Let's find volumes by using the disk method, sometimes called the washer method. Consider the region bounded by the curve y equals f of x and the x-axis for a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. So let's say it's this region here. If we revolve this region about the, the x-axis, the volume of the solid we obtain is the integral from a to b of pi f of x squared dx. For example, we revolve about the x-axis, the region bounded by y equals squared x, y equals 0, x equals 3, and x equals 10. Find the volume of the region. Here's what our region looks like. This is y equals squared x. y equals 0 is the x-axis. This is x equals 3 and x equals 10. So we are revolving about the x-axis, this region. So when we do that, we end up with a solid that looks something like this. Okay. So it looks a little like a wine glass that's, had, that's turned on its side and has the bottom sliced off. So here's the volume. The integral of pi f of x squared dx. Again, f of x is going to be this function. And the integral goes from 3 to 10 because those are the bounds on x. x goes from 3 to 10. So we have the integral from 3 to 10 of pi f of x squared. In other words, pi squared x squared dx. That's pi. We can pull the pi to the outside. You can do that with constants. Pi times the integral from 3 to 10 of x dx. In other words, it's pi times x squared over 2 as x goes from 3 to 10. Plug in 10, and we get pi times 100 halves. Plug in 3, and we get pi times 9 halves. So we end up with pi times 100 halves minus 9 halves, which is 91 pi over 2. We revolve about the x-axis, the region bounded by y equals x squared plus 2, x equals 0, and x equals 3. Find the volume of the region. So in this case, x equals 2, x equals 3. Okay, so you can't really tell that well from here, but it's going to go up to here. Okay, x squared plus 2 will take us to 3 squared plus 2, in other words, 11. So we're taking this region and revolving it about the x-axis. What would the solid look like? Okay, so the solid looks like this. Well, the region looks like this. Yeah, the region looks like this. So if you revolve this about the x-axis, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Oh my goodness, what is that? It looks a little like a bullhorn. It's hard to tell. Okay, the volume is going to be the integral from a to b of pi f of x squared dx. That's the integral from 0 to 3 of pi x squared plus 2 squared dx. Multiply it out the pi to the outside and multiply it out and we get pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4 dx. Integrate and we get pi times x to the fifth plus 4x cubed over 3x to the fifth over 5 plus 4x cubed over 3 plus 4x as x goes from 0 to 3 and when you plug in the numbers you end up with 483 pi over 5. If we revolve about the x-axis the region bounded by the curve y equals f of x and the x-axis the volume of the solid we obtain is this. Okay, we've seen that. Why is that? Why is it that this formula tells us the volume of the solid uh, that we revolve, we get when we revolve this region about the x-axis? Okay, here's why. Suppose we have this curve, uh, y equals f of x. Okay, this is a, this is b over here. Basically, what we're doing, well, consider this. Suppose we slice this into rectangles similar to what we did with Riemann sums, okay? And then we revolve each of these rectangles about the x-axis. When you take a rectangle and revolve it about the axis, you just can end up with a disk or a washer, something like that. And so now you're just summing up the areas, uh, really the volumes of these washers. Now, we can calculate the volume of each washer. Okay, the volume of the washer is going to be this height, which is delta x, because each of these is delta x. And so, and then the volume, so the volume is going to be the height times uh, this area, okay, the area of the face. Well, what is that really? It's what we get when we rotate this about the x-axis. So this, this distance is the same as this distance, in other words, f of x. So the area is going to be pi times f of x squared. And so basically we're summing up pi times f of x squared 
uh, dx, or delta x, really. And we've seen that as delta x approaches 0, as the number of subintervals approaches infinity, uh, this is just pi times f of x squared uh, delta x. Some of you are thinking, am I going to hold you accountable to know that? Well, I probably should, but mm, uh, I, don't, I don't think so. But it's really interesting nonetheless. Okay, so let's say we revolve about the x-axis, the region bounded by y equals x and y equals x squared. Find the volume of the solid we obtain. Okay, now this one's different because we're finding the volume of a solid that we get when we revolve this region about the x-axis. So it's not between a curve and the x-axis, it's between two regions. What would the solid look like? Okay, you revolve this about the x-axis. So here's what, here's what the solid would look like. It would look like a cone. Okay, it looks like a cone like this. But the cone's been hollowed out. Okay, because you're not rotating the entire triangle about the x-axis. If you did that, you know, if you rotated this triangle about the x-axis, you'd get a cone. You're just rotating this part. So it's a cone that's been hollowed out, essentially. Okay, if we're rotating about the x-axis, a region between, uh, let's say, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, uh, let's say y equals f of x is on the bottom, y equals g of x is on the top, something like that, uh, let's say from as x goes from a to b, okay, we're looking at a region like this. The volume of the solid we obtain is going to be pi times r, a big r squared, minus pi times little r squared dx, where r is the outer radius and little r is the inner radius. Okay, so in this case, capital R, when you rotate this about the x-axis, capital R would be g of x. So this would really be g of x squared. And little r is going to be this distance. is a smaller radius, so that's going to be f of x squared. So I'm, I'm not correcting anything. It's not wrong. It's just that in this particular example, that's what we want. Okay, so notice in this problem, okay, the outer radius... The, that G, that capital R, is going to be X. And the inner radius, that little r, is going to be uh, X squared. So notice what we want. We want pi times capital R squared, X squared, uh, minus pi times little r squared. So pi times X squared squared. Because capital R, the outer radius is X, and little r, the inner radius is X squared. Okay, multiply it out, we get pi x squared minus pi x to the fourth dx, integrated from 0 to 1. Uh, let's see, we integrate this, we get pi x cubed over 3 minus pi x cubed over 5. Plug in 1, and we end up with this. Plug in 0, and we get nothing. So the answer is 2 pi over 15. Okay, so that's great if we're revolving about the x-axis. Consider the region bounded by the curve, oh, let's say x equals f of y, and the y-axis for y between c and d. Okay, so we're revolving this region about the y-axis. If we revolve this region about the y-axis, the volume of the solid we obtain is the integral from c to d of pi f of y squared dy. Because really, it's just the same thing as what we saw earlier. It's just that you're, you're dealing with y's instead of x's. x equals a function of y instead of y equals a function of x. Okay, so for example, we revolve about the y-axis, the region bounded by x equals 6y minus y squared, y equals 1, y equals 4, and the x-axis. Find the volume of the resulting solid. Okay, so in this particular problem, uh, well now here, see here I tell you what the bounds are. I tell you that it's y equals 1 and y equals 4. So that's pretty easy. I mean, you, can, you can see what the bounds are going to be. Okay, so we end up with pi f of y squared, in other words, pi times 6y minus y squared. We integrate it from 1 to 4. Uh, multiply it out, you end up with this. Integrate, you end up with this. Plug in 4, you get this. Plug in 1, you get this. And your answer is 978 pi over 5. Okay, now in this particular problem, I told you what the bounds are. If I don't tell you what the bounds are, it gets a little more complicated, but you can do it. If you need to find out where these curves intersect, you can do it. Solve it like a system of equations y equals x and y equals x squared. Okay, that means x squared equals x. Get everything on one side. We have x squared minus x equals 0. So in other words, x times x minus 1 equals 0. So you can see the solutions are going to be x equals 0 or x equals, or x equals 1.